Stuart Edwards Foundation, a privately owned nonprofit organization, was created to preserve, protect, and interpret for the public the history of a settler's fort from the French and Indian War located right here in Cape and Bridge. Joseph Edwards came here in the 1730s to 40s from Chester County, Pennsylvania, settling his family on 400 acres of land and building a home. In 1755, after rising tensions with Indians and Canadian French opposing the expansion of British influence, trade, and settlements, and following a series of increasingly violent confrontations, King George II of England sent General Braddock with British regular troops to end French resistance by destroying Fort Duquesne. Following Braddock's disastrous losing campaign, the British frontier was left defenseless. Rather than be driven off his land by ravaging Indians with Canadian French leaders, Joseph Edwards, his three sons and neighbors, built a stockade about his home and outbuildings for refuge. Edwards' fort was never taken, though a major battle of the French and Indian War on the Virginia frontier was fought a mile away, involving Virginia regiment forces operating out of the fort. After some years, when the British had destroyed Fort Duquesne and the war moved eastward and north, Edwards' fort was a non-issue and was disassembled. Edwards' descendants moved away, and the land came into other ownership. In 1995, a group of concerned citizens formed the Fort Edwards Foundation and purchased the land on which Edwards' fort had stood. Their aim to preserve and protect it in a program of education and explanation to the public and students. Grant Monies built a visitor center, which opened in 2001. A body of programs was implemented for the public enlightenment. The Fort Edwards Foundation is administered and operated by an elected board of directors and four officers. Vital operations functions are conducted within committees. Common tasks are shared. Membership in the foundation is open and follows the calendar year 1 January through 31 December. Dues are $20 for an individual annual membership, $30 for a family annual, and $500 for a lifetime family membership. The Foundation Visitor Center is open from the third Saturday in June through the first Sunday in October. During the open period, the center is manned by docents on weekends, Saturday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Sunday 1 to 5 p.m. At the center, visitors may view storyboards on the walls and displays in cabinets, watch a variety of short videos, and in the museum shop, purchase an impressive array of books, maps, colonial-era music CDs, and art prints on the French and Indian War, colonial America, and major historical figures. Outside, visitors may enjoy the adjacent colonial kitchen garden with beds of culinary, medicinal, and dyeing, drying herbs and food crops in a pageant of color. A brick patio commemorates the 17 Virginia Regiment soldier casualties of the Battle of Great Cacapin, along with the names of contributors to the patio project. A memorial heritage walking trail leads visitors to a fort mock-up built to exhibit relative size and construction of period settlers' forts. Near the garden is a pavilion with picnic tables for visitors' use. Everywhere are benches for rest and reflection. Supplemental Activities The Artisans for Fort Edwards, a loosely affiliated group of artisans in various fields, all related to period skills, support public events at the fort. A youth initiative program conducts special activities for the young, including mentoring within a docent intern program in which youthful members use their talents to lend insights to visiting young people. A schools program provides school classes with a tandem history culture presentation by board members. The foundation also prints and distributes for members and visitors the Gazette, an informative newsletter about foundation programs, operations, management, and support. 
The Foundation sponsors three major public events each year. The Colonial Feast is celebrated on the Saturday nearest April 18th. This feast commemorates the Battle of the Great Cacapon, also known as Mercer's Massacre, a major battle of the French and Indian War on the Virginia Colony frontier when 17 members of the Virginia Regiment, Captain John Fenton Mercer, Ensign Thomas Carter, and 15 unnamed private soldiers were killed in an ambush battle on April 18, 1756, about a mile from the fort. We remember those lost by hosting a dinner in which attendees providing a colonial-era food dish mingle and discuss related subjects. Guest speakers may add to the celebration. Decimating the frontier of Virginia. Hampshire Family Frontier Day, the day on which the Visitor Center opens seasonal operations, occurs on the third Saturday in June from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Visitor Center, with all its internal attractions, is in full operation, while outside, major attractions include a wide range of activities. Reenactors perform their roles from the colonial period. Artisans create and display their wares. Vendors sell period goods. Demonstrators show off skills, tools, and implements of the era. Musicians perform. A blacksmith produces ironmongery. Beale's Company of the Maryland Regiment, a uniformed militia unit with period weapons and accoutrement, sets up their tent, presenting bivouac life, food and drink, military drill, and other Present. duties and delights of military life. Fire. A major attraction over the years has been reenactor William Hunt in the persona of Andrew Montour, a real-life translator and diplomat of the French and Indian War, born of a French mother and Indian father, and gifted in languages, who thrills schoolchildren and adults with a terrifying war cry. Hunt has also appeared as Ensign William Hunt, Virginia Militia, in full militia regalia. Lieutenant William Hunt, Virginia Regiment, and ultimately as young George Washington, Colonel, commanding the Virginia Regiment. Another popular reenactor, Patty Sue Cooper, portrays Mad Ann Bailey, a real-life frontier scout and mythologized Indian fighter during the perilous times of the French and Indian War. Herpetologist and ranger Roy Moose comes from Cranberry Mountain Nature Refuge with his sinuous friends, Venomous and Non, a major attraction for the young. Gary Van Meter trails his Conestoga wagon from Berryville, talks about the prairie schooner and its significance to the opening and settling of the western frontier. Local frontiersmen set up encampment in the grounds, a typical camp with skins and pelts from their hunting, trapping endeavors. No. Washerwoman Anna Kiefer brings her kettles and implements to portray a frontier housewife's efforts to keep her family cleanly dressed. Paul Parrish performs surveying with period implements, tools, and techniques. The linen lady, Melanie Desmond, produces linen cloth from raw flax plants, and many other personae fulfill other colonial-era roles. Artisans for Fort Edwards feature their skills displaying processes and products. Rug braiding, rug and decorator piece hooking, quilting, spinning and weaving. Calligraphy, period cursive writing, is demonstrated. Pottery making is shown. Gown dressmaking, the making of children's clothing, lace making, and children's doll making from corn husks. Vendors sell handmade leather goods, pottery, fiber art pieces, women's dress, gowns, and daily wear is offered, and scrimshaw artwork. A wide and busy range of activities go on throughout the day to the accompaniment of music. Brian LaFollette has been our faithful bagpiper throughout his growing and musical development years. The Gillies, a musical family, is often in attendance. And for some years, Dakota Hobby, as a violinist fiddler, grew up playing for us. Storytellers tell tales. The Indians don't have patience for siege warfare. 
A flint napper demonstrates skills making flints for guns. Enthusiasts display gun collections. A food vendor is always on hand, offering a wide variety of food and drink for purchase. A third major event, in the form of a wine and cheese party, is held in the autumn. Anyone can request an invitation by contacting a board member and provide contact information. There is a $20 per person fee for a delectable selection of finger foods, snacks, sodas, wine, beer, and desserts. A silent auction is held for donated art, books, items of historical interest. Chances are sold for a 50-50 drawing. In addition to the three main events of the season, the Foundation offers special workshops with guest artisans. We've hosted workshops on calligraphy, writing like George Washington with the Abbey Chapel. Woodworking, making your own tools by master craftsman and furniture maker Charles Boland. Brian LeMaster, master gunsmith, presenting the long rifle, designing and decorating guns. A class presented by Marianne Lister and Julia Flanagan offered children opportunity to work with new fiber art skills, and a cross-stitch craft teach-in was presented by the same ladies. Beyond these formalized instructional gatherings, ladies of the board have offered tea with Mrs. Edwards. Other members have given personal deliveries of information, informing middle school students, raising youth awareness, and invoking an interest in the docent intern program. Working with Holly Smith, Cape and Bridge Middle School art teacher, we have sponsored art contests among students who compete for prize money by creating a work of art defining what they think Fort Edwards looked like in 1755 at the peak of its importance during the French and Indian War. In 2016, there were 95 art entries. All these events and activities provide the life's force for the foundation in emphasizing the importance of Fort Edwards and other settlers' commitments, protecting their families and neighbors, allowing for growth of the frontier into unknown, often contested areas in the North America of 260 years ago.